So the technique that you're going to learn about in this activity is called centrifugation. And scientists use centrifugation when we want to do things like separating solids from liquids in mixtures. Um, we will be using centrifugation for that purpose as well as for the purpose of pushing our sample through a, a filter type material as well. In a professional lab, a synthetic biologist might use a centrifuge that looks something like this. It, it holds microfuge tubes, which are the little tubes that we've been using to hold our samples. We're going to be assembling a centrifuge out of a drill and this little adapter right here. So to explain a little bit how centrifugation works, um, you would put your sample into the thing that's going to hold it. So in this case, there'll be some kind of, of holder that holds your sample. And what the centrifuge does is it spins that sample around. Okay, so the sample is subjected to what we call centrifugal force. So you have felt centrifugal force uh, if you've ever been in a car that went around a corner too fast. So fun fact, um, in the winter when I was a kid and uh, my dad would tell my mom he was taking us sledding, uh, what he would do is we would go to the elementary school down the road and he would just spin and do donuts in the, in the parking lot um, and we'd go flying around in the car. Um, and that force that kind of pushes you to the outside of the, car, of the car when you go around a circle quickly is centrifugal force. And so what that's going to do is it's going to cause the solids or the heavier things in our sample to go to the bottom of the tube and then the, the liquids or the less dense or lighter material is going gonna, is gonna to just stay on the top. And that's going to enable us to separate things from one another. So the materials you need for this activity are found in activity bag number eight and the general lab supplies bag. So from the general lab supplies bag, you're going to need your cool uh, test tube rack with the, with the large 50 milliliter test tube in it. You're only going to need one of those. You're going to need your scale, which is in a box and looks like this. You're going to need a weigh boat, which is this diamond-shaped black plastic thing. Um, you can use a, a spoon to help scoop out one of the materials we're going to use. Um, you're going to need your microfuge tube rack, which is this little blue thing here. And you're going to need um, your Sharpie marker to label things. Okay. From the activity number eight bag, you're going to need um, four plastic pipettes. You'll need a uh, vial of lemon juice, which is in that bag. You will need three microfuge tubes, these little small test tubes. You will need the vial of blue dye. I'm, I'm not going to spoil the fun for you of this exercise and use the same dye as you will, so you'll be a little surprised by what happens. I'm using red food coloring instead of the blue dye today. And then you'll also have a, uh, a test tube that has some skim milk powder in it and the, um, the adapter that is the sample holder for your centrifuge. You will also need a cordless electric drill. First, I'm going to show you how to use your scale. And you may hear us call it a balance. Scientists tend to call their scales balances because old-fashioned scales used to have two pans that would balance when you were weighing things that were equal. So, if you open the cover of your balance, you'll see there's a display and you'll see there are some buttons for controls. You're going to hold the on-off button to turn it on, and then you're going to wait till it reads uh, a mass. Now, we're going to put the weigh boat on, and you'll notice that the weigh boat actually ha weighs something. It weighs 1.2 grams according to this scale. So all we care about is the mass of the chemical we'll be weighing out, and we want the scale to ignore the mass of the weigh boat. So we're going to push this button all the way on the left that says tear. And what that does, I'm going to push it now, what that does is it sets the scale's value to zero 
Okay, so now any weight that it shows is going to be solely due to what we put into the weigh boat. So we want one half gram, which is 0 0.5 grams of milk powder. And so I'm going to actually just kind of tap my little spoon that has some powder on it until it reads 0 0.5. So I don't want to dump it on there because I don't want to put too much of the chemical on there right away. I just want to do it slowly till I get the mass I want. And there I am, I am at 0.5 grams. And so I have the amount of milk powder that I want. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare our sample. So what we're doing in this part of the experiment is we're basically making some milk, we're reconstituting dried milk, and we're going to add an acid to it, we're going to add lemon juice to it to cause the casein or the milk proteins to precipitate or to clump together and form a solid so that we'll have a solid part of our sample and a liquid part of our sample. And you're going to learn more about the protein casein from the iGEM team when they talk to you about their project. So I thought milk would be a good sample for testing our centrifuge. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add 10 milliliters of water to our large tube. And I've marked this tube at the 10 milliliter line. You'll notice these test tubes have volume markings on them. So I'm going to add 10 milliliters of water to this tube and I've marked the 10 milliliter line so that you can see it. So you'll notice that these tubes are marked with volume markings. All right, so I'm going to pour water in to the 10 milliliter line and then I'm going to add my dry milk powder to that so we're making milk so if you want you can use this in your cereal afterwards now we never eat stuff that we or drink stuff that we use in the lab so now we want that powder to dissolve so we're going to cap the tube tightly and you're going to invert when we say invert in, in science we're talking about turning it upside down and back until all of that powder dissolves. Okay, so once your milk powder is all dissolved, um, then you're ready for the next step. And so don't worry if there are any bubbles, that's just normal. So we're going to add lemon juice to this milk and it's gonna cause the proteins to precipitate, to clump together. And the protein that's in milk is called casein. And you're going to learn more about casein from the iGEM team when they tell you about their project that they're doing this summer. So I'm going to take some lemon juice. Uh, your lemon juice tube may have some parafilm wrapped around the edge of the cap to keep it from leaking. So we're going to take the lemon juice and we're going to add 50 drops, which happens to be about 2 milliliters, of lemon juice to your milk. And that acid is going to cause the casein protein to clump together. So I'm going to add 50 drops. One, two, three, four, five. Eight, 49, 50. Okay, I'm going to recap my lemon juice. And I'm going to put the cap on my milk. Now, you are going to add four drops of the blue dye that's in your packet of materials. I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to spoil the mystery that you're going to solve uh, when you do your experiment. So I'm just going to leave it without dye. I'm going to put the cap on, and we're going to, again, we're going to invert to mix. Once that is all mixed, then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put one milliliter of this mixture into a microfuge tube and I'll put and I'll repeat that with a second tube and the reason that we do this is to keep our centrifuge balanced and I'll explain that to you when we when we assemble our centrifuge so the way you can tell whether you have a milliliter or not these tubes have little volume markings on them. So I'm just going to mark with my Sharpie 
where the one milliliter mark is, which makes it easier for me to tell when I have gotten that volume into the tube. So I'm going to take a fresh pipette, plastic pipette. I'm going to open up my milk mixture and I'm going to transfer one milliliter into each of my two microfuge tubes. That's the first tube. And there's the second tube. I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to put the cap on my big tube as well as the two microfuge tubes that I've filled. So it will take time for the chemical reaction that causes the proteins to clump together to occur. That reaction will happen faster at a warmer temperature. So if you have a heat block that works, you can set it to 37 and you can put this in your heat block for five minutes. Or if you want to put it in your pocket to keep it warm. Um, if, you, if you don't have a way of warming your sample, then just leave it at room temperature for a little bit longer. So 10 minutes would be good. While we're waiting for our samples to be ready to, to put in our centrifuge, we're going to assemble our centrifuge. And it has two very simple parts. So we have the sample holder, which is a long stick with this kind of Y-shaped adapter on the top that has holes in it that will hold our sample tubes. And then we have an electric drill. So some of you will have a drill that looks like this. Others of you will have a drill that your family had at home. So the important thing is, is I want the drill off or unplugged, and I want there to be no drill bit in the end. So to assemble your centrifuge, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to insert the sample holder into where you would put the drill bit in your drill and you want to tighten this thing that's called the chuck until your sample holder is in there good and tight. So here I can't really move it around. Okay. Now we're going to test our centrifuge by turning on the drill. So if you have this kind of drill, it has, it has a safety button right here that when it's in the middle is off and when it's pushed to one side or another, it's on. So to turn this on, we're going to push it all the way, and then you can push the button on the drill, and the drill will spin your sample holder. So two important safety reminders. One is that when you're using your drill centrifuge, you never want to point it towards your face we want all of your beautiful faces to remain intact and you're never going to point it at someone else no matter how mad you are at your brother or sister okay so we're always going to point it just straight up probably the best is just if you can lie it on the bench and just point it straight up or you can point it away from you okay that's safety thing number one safety thing number two which applies to all centrifuges, regardless of whether it's made from a drill or whether it's one you find in the lab, is that they need to be balanced. If you've ever watched a washing machine wash your clothes, when it gets to the spin part, you may see the washing machine like vibrate back and forth. That's because the weight in the part of the washing machine that's, that's spinning your clothes around to get the water out of them is un, what we call unbalanced. It means there's more weight on one side than the other. Whenever we use a centrifuge, we try to keep the, our sample holders balanced so that there's the same amount of mass on either side of our sample. And so, so that way, when the object is spinning, the weight on either side of the sample holder is the same so that it doesn't put too much pressure on one side or the other. And that's the reason that I had you put half of your sample in, in two tubes.
So my 10 minutes has passed, and now it's time for me to spin my samples to separate the solid from the liquid. So I'm going to take my two samples, and I'm going to put them in the sample holder of my centrifuge. And when I put samples in a centrifuge uh, with microfuge tubes, I like to orient them or position them so that the little hinge of the tube is facing outward. Um, and that way, you know, sort of all my tubes are in the same direction. Um, and that will cause me, my pellet, to form in the same position in all my tubes. So I've got those into my sample holder. My sample holder is balanced because I have a tube with the same mass on either side. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to spin our samples by turning our centrifuge on. And we're just going to spin them for one minute. Okay, so our minute is up. So I'm going to very carefully, without shaking my tube, remove the sample from the sample holder. And what you should see is on top there is clear liquid or a, a clear colored liquid and on the bottom you'll see a cloudy um, precipitate. So the bottom that's cloudy we call the pellet and the fluid that's up at the top we call the supernatant fluid. So just like Superman or a superhero flies over a city, the supernatant fluid is lying on top of or flying over the pellet. So what we want to do is we want to look at the pellet and the supernatant separately. And so I have another empty tube here, that's what the third tube was for. And I'm going to take a pipette and I'm going to try to very carefully remove the supernatant fluid or some of the supernatant fluid without disrupting or bothering or sucking up the pellet. So we want to just very gently suck up some of that liquid and put it into our tube. And then you're going to want to look at the color of your supernatant in your pellet and try to decide what does the blue dye bind to? Does it bind to the protein that will be in the pellet or does it bind to the sugars that will be in the supernatant fluid? So cleanup for that activity is very simple. Um, your pipettes can simply go in the trash along with your weigh boat, or you can, if you have fun playing with weighing things, you can wash and reuse your weigh boat. Um, and then your, your tubes of lemon juice and your lemon juice milk mixture can just be poured down the drain. These are disposable tubes. You can um, just throw them in the regular trash, or you can wash them and reuse them for experiments that you do at home. And your microfuge tubes can just go in the trash. <laughs>